happy 2K gang. 2K, man. We hit 2,000 followers on Twitch. If you would ask me on April 6th, during the first stream ever, if we get to literally 10 followers, let alone 2,000, that would have been a legitimate conversation. I don't know if we would have gotten to 10. There's no, there's nothing guaranteed in this. And to, to get to 2,000 followers seems impossible. I hope you enjoy this very poorly made uh, collage of some of the icons that have walked past this stream. If I could put all of you in this, I would. Uh, and some of the, you know, some of our channel legends had to be here to celebrate with us. If there's any comment regarding Tommy Muller, uh, you will be banned from the stream. So uh, really quick, thank you guys for reaching out. I I had a video and stuff. I still can't access videos. So there's not going to be edits or anything in this. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a jankety little video, but it, that's kind of the way we run it here on this BTEC stream. So don't get mad at me for lack of editing because I can't edit videos. I can only record them and post them. Uh, and if you ask a question, I answered it. So the only thing I didn't do was I couldn't answer everyone. Some people asked multiple questions, but I made sure if you at least asked one question, it was answered. Uh, and we'll get sappy at the end of the video, but let's dive into it. I'm sure you guys don't want to wait all day to have your questions answered. So really quick, we will start off our homie Risky Rashford. Ask the question, sleep with socks on or off? I sleep with nothing on. Risky, okay. Moving forward, I'm a footballer ass. Bit of a random question, but if you had to choose one temperature to live in for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, so I used to live in California. I was born and raised there, and the weather's obviously incredible, and I've lived in the Midwest, which if you don't know the United States, it's much more of like a, there's a lot more seasonal weather. I, the winters, right? It's 20 degrees outside right now here in Chicago. And I genuinely do enjoy the Midwest a lot. I, I would I would say at this point in my life right now, granted when I get older and I'm probably just cold all the time, I'd rather live in the sun. But right now, I really enjoy the winter. I really enjoy the seasonal months. So I would say living in like the, the Midwest, having like kind of a, you know, summers and winters uh, and falls, I do really enjoy that. So next we have, will you ever contact Food Ranger? By the way, we're doing like kind of the more like fun questions to begin with. And then we're going to do the uh, more serious questions at the end. Uh, Tasha asks, will you ever contact Food Ranger for a collab in Pakistan? If Food Ranger will have us in Pakistan, I would happily go. Vivek feels like we need to do it. If he can get his merch better, which maybe we help him on, maybe that's how we build a relationship. If his merch can improve, I'd happily collab with uh, him. The snack videos need to come back, and we need to have a collab. Ricky asks, in all capital letters, by the way, which I love, just, just the passion for these questions is, <laughs> is spectacular. Would you rather have legs as long as your fingers... Or have fingers as long as your legs. <laughs> I would rather have legs as long as my fingers. Yeah, I don't know how you would get around with. You can survive that way. I think the other way, if your fingers were as long as your legs, I feel like life would just be much more difficult um, at its core. Uh, would you rather have a higher IQ or a photographic memory? Um, I would rather have a higher IQ. I feel like that just applies to more things where photograph, I have a good memory, but I think if you just have a higher IQ, if you're just smarter in general, just all the time, I'd rather have that. And then when will you do a backflip for 50 gifted? Uh, when I get better genes and I'm not a huge beta and I'm not afraid to backflip. So never, Ricky, never. Uh, I'm a footballer. I also ask, what's your favorite memory of playing football when you were younger? And what position do you love playing the most? So my positions that I played, I played cam, striker, right wing, um, and I played right back. Right back was when I got older and I got worse at sports. So they were just like gradually moved me further back the field to be less of a liability. Uh, and then my favorite memory, when I was younger, man, we were, um, we were in a good team at the time and we were playing this team and we were getting like no calls. And my brother, um, started arguing with the ref and the ref was like, if you say one more thing, like you're done. And finally, we got a call in the game, and my brother stood up and screamed at the ref. He said, oh, wow, you found your whistle. And my brother got a red card and got sent off the game. And as you know, I'm a passionate, competitive person. And when my family holds it down for me, that means a lot, man. So that's one of my favorite – that's probably my favorite moment, just like knowing that my brother was rider dying for the boys. And so that was pretty cool. Um, insane ass – insane asked a lot of questions, per usual. Uh, but this was um, – one of the joking ones I felt that was appropriate for the stream. So yes, uh, who do you prefer, Shane or Veeves? Uh, both are shit mods, he said. Uh, and I think that the I posted this because I just show I wanted to show the fact that Vivek and Shane both were like the other person. I think it just shows you how cool they are and how down to earth they are. 
just showing love to the person. So ridiculous question from Insane, no surprise, and good answer from Beeves and Shaney Boy. Uh, next, Rob Drizzy, the absolute icon goat himself, asks, "Would you who would win in a best uh, good-looking streamer contest between you and Zwayback? Uh, Zwayback, 100%. I don't have hair. And Zwayback has a beautiful, luscious mane. Um, so maybe in a couple months we revisit, we revisit this question, but right now I'm a hideous monster and Zwayback is a stunning, gorgeous lad. So I lose that one in a landslide. Then we have the Tedster, uh, says, do you sleep on your left or right side of the bed? And mine's always left. Okay. Uh, I sleep on the left side of the bed and to add a component to this that I think people will make fun of me for, I sleep on my back and I don't, I didn't used to do that. But as I've told you guys on the stream, this is, I mean, this is why I'm a 44 year old, like crumbling man. My shoulders are terrible. And as a result, I have to sleep on my back to try and avoid rolling on them in the middle of the night. So there you go. There's a fun fact for me about like how I have to sleep like a freaking like a dead person in a coffin every night. So that's fun. Uh, Ernest, or, I'm sorry, Ernesto, but Ern it'll always be Ernest to me in some way. Uh, as favorite FIFA, FIFA 14, man, it's, it's. It's the first FIFA I ever played. So it's like it's like when you like fall in love with the game for the first time. And it's not as serious. It's not as competitive. It was just like, oh, this game exists. Like I really hadn't played it. And it was like, wow, this is amazing. Ultimate Team was the first time I had Ultimate Team. It was just this, you know, passion falling in love with a new video game that's lasted for this long. So FIFA 14, man, was was brilliant. Uh, Louie, Pat God, maybe, maybe more than me or Jose will ever be. Uh, says, ever consider coming to England for a football game? Yes, I've been to England multiple times. I've tried to go to a uh, a game before. Um, the one time we didn't go, the one time I wanted to, I couldn't go because of a scheduling conflict. But I've been to a game in Spain. I've, I've been at the Camp Nou, and I would 1,000% love to go to a, a ton of different uh, matches all over um, Europe, um, England included. So yes, 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 I would love to. Uh, Schwartzy asks, are you the packing? And if so, give us uh, a reason with evidence that it's you. Um, I feel like I'm going to be crowned the pack king. I think the whole purpose of this is that Jose's had some great pulls and I've had some great pulls and he's used some you know other devices to help that out. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but truly on the team of the year when it all comes out and it's just us building up packs, us grinding and us just saying who's the better pack king who is really the bad king we will determine it that day so that is what i really think is the who will really determine who's the packing so right now it's just up in the air it's all it's all talking trash having a good time but we will really see who's the pack king uh in a very short period of time next i'm a footballer he has a lot of questions and i love him for it depending on what happens in the team that you're pack opening i try to get these in order with jose and chill uh, and the hype it brings, have you given thought to a potential team in season pack opening? We have not necessarily discussed that, but I love where your head's at. And if this goes over well from the perspective that you guys just enjoy it from a content perspective and two, it's just fun, then I don't see why we wouldn't explore doing it all over again. I mean, it's so easy. It's so fun. And it's just, who doesn't like packs? Who doesn't like ribbon packs? Who doesn't like streamers having beef, fake beef? I mean, this is just, it's content, baby. We freaking love content over here. And that's what this is. So yeah, hundred percent, we would explore this. I'm totally down. Next, uh, mini. The homie Sloss asks, how does it feel to win the packing? And I like that his head's over there. So many just says that in general, how's it going to feel? Well, listen, we're going to celebrate accordingly when we win it. When we win it. Jose then asks, uh, so these are some of the more, I think, thought-provoking questions. Says, what's the worst experience you've had with a romantic interest? And then he also says, how's it feel to know you're losing the packing? Shut up. And from the worst experience I've ever had, I can 100% answer this. This is an easy one. Um, I've, I've actually said this before, but I will tell it. I mean, not everybody was in the stream. The first date I ever went on, um, with a girl at one point in my life, um, I got food poisoning at the restaurant, like while eating. And I spent the entire dinner going to the bathroom and dry heaving and then coming back. So she would talk, we would like start a conversation for like 30 seconds, man. And I would literally be like, can you just excuse me? And I'd go to the bathroom and I'd be sitting over the toilet, dry heaving, sweating like a mess. And I'd be back, gone for like six, seven minutes. I can't fathom what she was going through just sitting in that chair by herself on a first date thinking, what is happening to this guy? And I'm telling you, I went to the bathroom probably four or five times for an extended period of time within a 35, 40 minute window. 
And then as we walked out um, after eating, I threw up on the side of the road and she was next to me. So that was by far and away the worst experience I've ever had. Yeah, I, I don't know how it gets much worse than that. It's pretty bad. Uh, Kangas asks, what got you into football, then into FIFA? And which FIFA do you start on? So FIFA 14 uh, is where I started. And I've always been a fan of the game of football. I played it growing up. It's the sport I love playing um, and played the longest of any sport that I've ever had. But in terms of FIFA, man, it was Kyle. So Kyle, the absolute goat, icon, legend, man myth of the stream. Uh, we were in college. He had the dorm room across from me. That's how we met. I literally had one, uh, what, 141. He had 143, I think, if I remember correctly. It's so long ago. That was like our door numbers. He was across from me. And uh, and yeah, man, literally just he had the door open, and played FIFA, and then I played it with him, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Um, what motivated you to start streaming Ass Insane? And what inspired you to play FIFA? It is a genuine question. Thank you, Insane. Uh, and this actually, the question is also asked by VBAC. So what made you first get into streaming? So uh, in terms of FIFA, I think I just answered. There wasn't like this, like, why do I want to play FIFA? It was like Kyle was playing and I started playing. And then literally I was like, this game is amazing. And that was that. Uh, and then first game of streaming, man, I, I really, I've, I've told you guys, I've always loved the concept. When I first saw people streaming, I was like, this is insane to me. This is insane that like someone is like playing a video game like I do every single night and there's like they're hanging out with people like cool people on the internet and like just hang this is like a chill video game session. It's like that looks awesome like and you just get to hang out with people and like showcase your personality and stuff. I mean like, this is a this is an amazing concept and then as I've always and I always wanted to do it man and um, as time got time went on time went on I didn't do it um, and I talked about doing it every year for literally seven years. Um, and I was too afraid to do it. Um, you know, this, this pandemic hit and I, I kept, I feel like I'm someone who gives really good advice. I was always like, Hey, like you should go do X. You should chase your dreams. You should do, but then I wasn't doing it myself. And I was like, am I really about to like 20 years from now, 30 years from now, like wake up and just regret the fact that I never even attempted to chase a dream that I had and told and acted like to other people that they should do it and like didn't take my own advice like i i was i'm i was so afraid of the regret eventually that got so fearful the the fear of streaming and being vulnerable on the internet was the highest fear i had and then the fear of of never doing it became greater and that's how i started streaming so that's how i got to this point it's the best decision i've ever made um anto the absolute freaking lad man how you doing brother uh asked what do you typically do for fun when you're not streaming uh, so I'm a, I'm a huge, first of all, I'm a very social person pre COVID man. I'm, I love hanging out with people, going to people's houses, going to bars, things like that. Very social individual. Uh, before I started streaming though, I was gaming like all the time at night. Like, I mean, me and my boys would get together and play. It's one of the, it's actually one of the things that I kind of miss from stream since I've started streaming is that I don't necessarily game with my friends as much as I used to, but it's a worthy trade off considering the experience. Uh, and then I'm a huge fan of sports, man. So like, just watching sports. Um, I mean, I literally cut the stream short tonight to watch the Browns, who I think are now losing by two touchdowns, which is devastating. Um, but I'm a huge fan of sports, but just doing social stuff, man, getting out, enjoying life. I love restaurants. So a lot, of, one thing I'll do when restaurants are open again, I'm someone who tries like a new restaurant every single week. I absolutely love that. I love trying new, new foods, new cultures, things like that. So um, there's a couple different like hobbies I have outside of streaming. Uh, but with COVID, streaming has become my everything. So. Uh, Shay asks, what's your favorite streaming moment? And, uh, there's a lot of great moments, man. I mean, we've really, we've done a lot in eight months and a lot of like memorable and I feel like really impactful things. I feel like we've become an incredible community. I'm really proud of the community that we have. I feel like everyone in our community actually cares, like, and not saying that they don't in other communities, but I feel like we all like give a shit about each other. Like I care about every one of you. I feel like you know that. I feel like everyone you know that you can literally talk to me in any capacity, whether we're on stream in a DM, whatever it is, I'm like, we'll listen to you. And I feel like you guys are there to support each other. I mean, there's been multiple moments in our stream where people have been vulnerable and, and talked about things in their life and the support that you, not even that I'm trying to show, the support that you guys show for each other. I think the, if I had to say what's my favorite thing about streaming in general is that the community that we've built is truly beautiful. And I think that my favorite moment is for sure the charity stream. I think the fact that we together as a group of people came together and 
regardless of what way you support that stream, made a genuine impact in the lives of people that need help, I think is a truly, it just shows you what's capable through streaming, but what we were able to do is is pretty profound. And um, in a time where mental health is maybe as difficult and as pressing of an issue as it's ever been, um, I think that's a pretty remarkable moment. Uh, you know, no matter what happens with this streaming thing, I will, I will remember that day and what we did for the rest of my life. So yeah, that's my favorite moment. And then my favorite thing is just what we've built. So it's a great question. Thank you, Shay. Uh, Veeves asks, how long do you plan to keep streaming? And where do you see the stream going in the future? And what are your predictions? Awesome question. It's a question I ask myself literally every single night um, is where's this thing going? Where's this thing going? What I would say from the first answer, and I, it, this is like, there's not like a time. Like I'm not gonna be like, I, I think I'm gonna stream for another six months. And if it doesn't hit in six months, then I'm out of here or whatever. I'm gonna stream until I stop enjoying it. I really just enjoy it. I like this. I wouldn't have committed over 800 hours in the past eight months if I didn't just enjoy what I'm doing. I'm really, it's just fun, man. It's just fun to share experiences with people all over the world and just like have this ridiculous community with your own inside jokes. It's just fun, man. So I, I will stream until I don't enjoy it anymore. Um, that or maybe I like have like a kid or something down the road and then it's like, dude, you have to take maybe like stop playing video games, take care of a kid or something. I mean, maybe if that comes, I don't know. But right now, man, it's just like in, I'm enjoying it and I'm going to keep doing it until I that that passion and that joy and that love for this thing stops, which hopefully it never does. And then what are my predictions? I've always I think people have different roads to success on this thing. And obviously, I've been a little stubborn. I feel like I'm, I want to grow the way that I feel like I want the channel to grow. And so I've maybe been an idiot in some capacities because I feel like I, we could have grown quicker, but we've also grown incredibly well regardless. Um, I've always thought that this is something you have to work your tail off for, for a super long time to achieve success. And so my prediction is that we will do this thing. I, I do think that at some point in my life, I will be a, uh, this will be my career. How long it will take, I don't know, but I am right now 100% willing to go however long it takes. So that's the way I feel about it. Uh, Diego asks, freaking DGR, you dog. Do you feel you've grown from streaming personally? Yeah, one, that one billion percent. Like it's been the most rewarding experience of my entire life. It's not even close. I've never put this much work into anything like passion and energy into something and I've never received so much back. What I would say, I thought about this question a lot. I think this is a great question. And I want to, I want to speak on one thing in particular. It, this is the most vulnerable I've ever been in my life. It's because you're constantly putting yourself out there. You know, I could come on the stream and there could be zero people. I could tweet something out that I want a lot of interaction on. There could be no responses. Um, and you're just online and like, you're just like have to be someone entertaining. Um, it's an incredibly vulnerable experience. I think that's a really great thing to like be in this like vulnerable state to be like nervous and worried of the way you're going to be like received by people is a really, I think just positive thing overall, because it just, it, I, it removes you so far from your comfort zone. I'm around this, I'm around my family, my friends. I know that they like me. I know they love me. Um, I know that I'm like, I have a great place and I have a great life. And then to, to do something like this, to really just put yourself on the map and just be like, how are people going to receive me? And like the wacky shit that I do, <laughs> It's been an incredibly rewarding experience. I, I can't tell you, um, it's also made me creative. Like I have, I have I have not done a creative thing in my life, I really feel like, in, since I got into the workforce. And this is the most creative thing I've ever had the pleasure of doing. So I've grown creatively and I feel like the vulnerable, vul my vulnerability through this has been very real. And also it's it's been a great experience to be that vulnerable and then to receive you know good and bad responses. It's been great, man, so. That was a great question too. Uh, all these are great men. Um, I'm a footballer ass. A lot of questions I told you, dude. Um, he says, if you have one aspiration or one hope in the next three years of your life, what would it be? Uh, so I've, I, I'll say one in terms of the streaming world because I feel like that's kind of more where like this question might be targeted. I would love to make this a career. And I think like two years from now is probably a realistic opportunity, which I know sounds insane like to do this for maybe three years and see if it doesn't go anywhere, but I'm willing to stick this thing out and, and see what can happen. So yeah, if I could quit my job and say I'm a professional streamer, that would be super cool. 
And then uh, from like a personal standpoint, I just want to become just a, a better person over the next three years. I feel like I've grown from a responsibility aspect of my life so dramatically through this experience. I just want to become a great uncle. I want to become a great brother and a great son. Um, I want to just become a good person in general and just continue to be a better person. So I think that's just should always be your goal. Just be better than the person you were the last year. Um, and whatever areas that needs to happen and for that to be the case, you should strive to do that. And, uh, and then from a, like a career perspective, I'd love to be a streamer, man. So Vasco, the absolute freaking goat, dude. Ask, what's your, who is your favorite streamer and how, also how do you have such a great heart? First of all, I'd ask the same question of you at the end. How do you have such a great heart too, man? I, I, this community, the people that I've met through this experience, everyone's just awesome and just freaking cool and like cares about each other and is so giving. I mean, that, that, this, this question, how do you have such a great heart? I feel like it could be asked by everyone that I've interacted with on this platform. It's truly, it's truly remarkable. And then he says, who's your favorite streamer? I'm, I got, I really fell in love with streaming and I've still do to this day through Nick 28 streams. And I know that he's not necessarily the most popular streamer from maybe even the people that watch our stream, but that was who I grew up watching, man. I mean, that's the first person I followed on Twitch. It's the first um, person I subscribed to. He's just such a, I just really respect his dedication and his passion. And I think his work ethic is just unparalleled and, and, I don't know. That's it's like I feel like at his core, he's just a. Uh, I feel like a genuine person and a genuine soul. Not that a lot of other guys are. I think they're all. A lot of streamers are. I think they're all fantastic. Um, but I don't know. I just resonated with with Nick Twenty Eight T um, growing up and and still have. Um, Jose asks, "This is the final question, man. And if you've made it somehow through this whole video, I really appreciate it. Uh, the final question is, what legacy do you want to leave behind? And I think this is an amazing question. Um, I think if I think if not necessarily that I would feel this way, but if whatever years or however long down the road, let's say I don't stream anymore. If, if like people that met in our stream are still connected in some way, like if I still talk to people or like if, if there's like relationships that have been, that were created for, through the stream and memories that were created through the stream that lived on in other people's minds and not just mine past the stream's existence, I feel like that then we did a good job. I feel like if we created something that mattered to people and that somehow still holds even the smallest weight to people, no matter how long this journey rides, I think that would truly be a great experience. Um, and with that, man, I want to say if you've made it this far, I don't care about likes. I don't care about subscriptions. I really don't. If you made it this far, man, thank you. Thank you for literally every time I go live, knowing that there's going to be someone in the stream. Thank you for entertaining my literally insanity. Thank you for listening to me probably say a bunch of boring things and some, and maybe some great things and maybe uh, not have the best streams at time, but then be there when we do have the big ones and the crazy streams too. Thank you for giving a shit about me and each other. Um, and thank you for like accepting me into what I think has been the most incredible community I've had the pleasure of joining in my life. So Thank you guys, 2K, what a dream, and we keep going. Like I said, baby, we're going to the moon, and you can say it louder so the people in the back can hear you, baby. Um, all right, gang, I will see you for a stream another day, and thank you again, and don't even pay attention to the fact that we're gonna go to a computer screen for the end of the video. Love y'all, man.